Today's episode is brought to you by Avant Realty. Avant Realty is located in Williamsville, New York, and was founded by Charles Glander and Nathan Marziali with the intention of creating a brokerage committed outstanding customer service and professionalism. Avant Realty is also very dedicated to not only serving the people in Western New York, but also giving back. So if you're looking to buy or sell real estate, give Avant Realty a call and mention Cover One. When you do, a $500 donation will be sent to a charity of your choice at closing. So get to AvantRealty.com or call Charles and Nate at 716-333-HOME. That's 716-333-4663. Bill's starting linebacker Matt Milano is in the final year of his rookie deal, and even after three productive seasons, he is still one of the league's best-kept secrets. While he's a relative unknown to many fans, Milano is one of the most disruptive players at his position. The former safety plays with a quick trigger against a run, is a kamikaze pilot when asked to rush the passer, and he can plaster offensive weapons at all levels of the field. Milano is likely to garner a hefty raise after this season. So we're going to take a look at how important he is to the Bills defense, and why the Bills regime will have a tough decision on their hands in the near future. Milano is a perfect fit for Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier's defensive style. He embodies everything that they look for in a linebacker. On the snap, he is a proactive player whose feet are always moving. He doesn't let the ball come to him. When he reads run, he consistently fires his gun and slithers through gaps to bring down ball carriers. His athleticism is his calling card. He's able to shuffle laterally down the line of scrimmage while leveraging the ball. Then once the running back commits to the hole, Milano ends the play. You can see why he's such a valuable defender. On this play against the Bengals, he is stacked over the weak side A-gap. On the snap, the Bengals run a pin and pull run out wide. Milano reads run by seeing the two down or pin blocks on the front side of the formation. Once run is established, he now finds the ball. The running back's angle after the handoff reads wide run, so Milano assesses the blockers and traffic out ahead of him and continues to leverage the ball. As he is leveraging, a hole opens up, but the back doesn't commit, so Milano stays on his horse. Milano does a great job of sifting through traffic, and once the back commits out wide, he stays over the top of the pulling lineman and wraps up the runner. McDermott likes for his backers to play a freestyle brand of football, one that isn't confined to thought. He likes his players to play fast and pull the trigger. But what I also think makes Milano that guy and more is his flexibility. He plays loose and his body is loose. He's extremely flexible, and it's one of the reasons he is so effective against the run. He isn't a block destroyer. He isn't going to stack alignment by shocking on contact, then shedding. No, he's going to do what he can to ricochet off of a block or avoid it altogether, and that is a testament to his athleticism. Watch his play against the Titans. Tennessee runs a power run right at Milano. Milano is a C-gap player here, and big guard Roger Saffold is pulling and fitting him up. As Saffold closes the distance and prepares to unload on Milano, Milano squares up as if he is about to receive the blow, but instead he hops outside to avoid the block, thereby shrinking his blocking surface area and changing the angle of contact. He then shows off his bend and flexibility to box up the runner. Milano routinely uses his feet and hands to defeat blocks and stay ahead of traffic in order to maintain his gap integrity and close down running lanes. Look at how tight he stays to the block in order to fill his assigned gap. The Bills are incredibly difficult to run wide on because of the athleticism of their linebackers. They move so well, and Milano is as good as anyone when it comes to scraping laterally and using his feet to work around his hands in order to defeat blocks. The Steelers work a combo block on defensive tackle Vincent Taylor, with the right tackle ultimately responsible for the backside linebacker Milano. Milano reads run, so he attacks the line of scrimmage and scrapes laterally. Playing tight to the line of scrimmage can allow much bigger linemen to swallow up lighter linebackers like Milano. But Milano uses his athleticism to defeat the block. He shuffles his feet around his hands as he makes contact with the tackle, and it puts him out in front of the block and dead even with the running back. That sort of movement isn't matched by many linebackers in the league, and that's because Milano isn't stiff like many other linebackers. His run and chase abilities are the reason why he has accumulated 175 solo tackles and 102 stops in 44 games. He seems to make a big play when the Bills defense needs him to. Check out this third and three play against the Bears. The Bears dial up a speed option, a play that is rarely used at the NFL level, so it's probably not practiced all that often. Jordan Poyer utilizes a feather technique meant to muddy up the keep or pitch read of Mitchell Trubisky, 
but eventually Poyer has to attack the ball. This makes Milano's job difficult because he is playing off of Poyer's decision. He maintains his leverage on the ball perfectly, and once he sees Poyer take Trubisky, he hits a turbo button to bring down Tariq Cohen in the backfield. Milano isn't just a nuisance against the run. He's the type of linebacker that can insert as a rusher too. In 2019, he rushed a passer on 15% of his snaps and registered 2 sacks, 6 QB hits, and 11 QB hurries. Through 3 seasons, he has racked up 34 total pressures. He's able to affect the quarterback from linebacker depth, thanks to his speed. Like this play against the Vikings, defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier dials up a creeper pressure. A creeper pressure attacks a certain pass protection by sending a rusher from a non-traditional spot, such as linebacker, and dropping a defender into coverage from a non-traditional position, like defensive end. So this pressure does not sacrifice coverage because it is still only a four-man rush. So on the snap, Milano is rushing with defensive end Trent Murphy dropping. The seven defenders dropping into coverage drop into a base cover three. As QB Kirk Cousins hits the top of his drop, slot corner Taron Johnson and defensive end Murphy eliminate his first couple options, which gets Cousins to hold onto the ball until Milano sacks him. Jerry Hughes is in a seven technique with Kyle Williams in a four eye. And on the snap, Williams drives hard into the opposite A gap, so the guard has to escort him to the center. This leaves Milano one on one with the running back coming across the formation. The running back has his momentum already working against him, but he also doesn't square up to Milano. Milano has a full head of steam and he's able to olay the block. Hughes dips under his block and flattens to the quarterback, which forces Cousins to climb the pocket right into the arms of Milano. He shows some insane athleticism on this play as Ryan Fitzpatrick tries to own their quick game. The Bills show a double mug look, with both linebackers mugging the A gap. The center and left side of the line slide to their left, with the left guard and right tackle man on man versus Shaq Lawson and Star Latulale. This puts the running back all alone versus Milano. Milano throws him by, but realizes that Fitzy is getting rid of the ball, so he jumps up and bats it down. When Milano isn't rushing the quarterback, he still finds ways to be a thorn in the QB's side. His knack for clogging passing lanes disrupted a handful of plays that were open. Plays where the offense ran play action to get Milano into the line of scrimmage to defend the run in order to throw it behind him. But batting passes in these situations is something that defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier drills, and Milano and Edmonds take it from the practice field to the game field. Noticing a trend yet? Matt Milano is always around the ball. Sure, he will miss tackles from time to time, but he more than makes up for it with splash plays. His knack for being around the ball puts him in fortuitous positions. In three seasons, Milano has forced two fumbles and has recovered five, and even made a house call on one of them. But turnovers are weird like that. A lot of them are luck, and they come in bunches. But some credit does have to go to Milano, because he is always in position nearby to pounce when the weird bounces occur. Like this dropped pass that ended up in Milano's hands. The Jaguars have 48 seconds on the clock near the end of the first half, with the ball on the 49 yard line. So they're trying to get some points before halftime. The Jags align in a 2x2 two two set, with the running back offset into the boundary. The Bills dial up their quarters coverage, a coverage that is meant to protect deep with four defenders, but one that also forces the three underneath defenders to cover a lot of green. With four defenders deep, Milano and Edmonds are pattern matching the tight end and running back to maximize the coverage. So when the running back releases wide outside the tackle, you see Edmonds execute a push call. So that means Milano now has to keep a watchful eye on the back and Edmonds will take the tight end. Milano widens with the running back but maintains his depth. He spaces the running back and receiver really well. He honors what the coaches call the no cover zone. He doesn't just close the cushion on the running back. He keeps his depth at five yards like he is taught. With the tight end going vertical past the linebackers, Edmonds passes the tight end on and now has to work to the curl by the receiver. The timing is on point for the Jags and the window opens up. But the pass sails through the hands of the receiver and Milano's spacing and positioning puts him right in position to reel in the interception. Milano's experience as safety shows up all over his film. He moves with such fluidity and he trusts his eyes. Generally, linebackers are stiffer than defensive backs, so Milano takes pride in how his athleticism is some of the best at the position. He told the Buffalo News that coming from the secondary, he has a little more swag in the pass game. He feels comfortable doing it. Watch how he backpedals with his eyes on the quarterback and just lets a QB's eyes take him to the ball. That level of comfort only comes from playing in space and being the safety valve on the back end of a defense for years. Here's another big play near the end of the half. 
The Buccaneers have 33 seconds on the clock in the second quarter. They send out a 2x2 set, with the running back set into the boundary. Given the situation, the Bills once again dial up their quarter's coverage, with Milano aligned just inside the slot player, tight end Cameron Brait. On the snap, Brait releases vertically and once he reaches Milano's depth, Milano generally would pass him on to the safety, then work from the hook to curl area to the flats. But Milano is watching quarterback Jameis Winston like a hawk. He notices Winston staring Brait down and his body posture is locked in to throw it towards the middle of the field. This is important because generally once Brait was going vertical past Milano, he would then work to the bottom of the screen. But Milano reads Winston like a book. Milano stays in his back pedal and plays the bender route over the middle, and his instincts pay off. He's able to make another timely interception for his team. Milano is quietly one of the best matchup linebackers in the game. Yes, a matchup linebacker, not a safety. This is what Bills linebacker coach Bob Babich had to say about Milano. You'd be hard pressed to find a better matchup linebacker than him right now in the NFL. I'm not saying that because I coach him. I'm very honest about the position, and I believe that he's as good as there is in the NFL. We have no problems matching him up with anybody. Take this play from 2018, for example, a play where Milano took it to Rob Gronkowski. Gronk was a beast in the division. That was likely a major factor in drafting a guy like Milano. On this third and five play in the red zone, Milano takes the fight to Gronk and then uses his speed to nearly pick off Tom Brady. Here's another pass breakup, this time on third and goal against the Texans late in the fourth quarter. The Texans send a three by one set out and you see Poyer signal a triangle call. This is just a three over two call, so the three Bills defenders will pattern match the two receivers that the Texans have to the bottom of the screen. On the snap, Milano appears to execute a push call, so now he has to shift his focus to the tight end. But the tight end isn't running a vertical route like he did on Milano's interception against the Jags. Instead, he's running over the middle. So because Milano hopped wide to leverage the possible vertical route, he now has to chase the tight end down to get back in the phase. The pass rush helps him do just that. Jerry Hughes forces Deshaun Watson to scramble and throw it on the run, but Milano was able to close the distance on the tight end and break up the pass at the catch point. It was great recovery by Milano because he had zero help to the field side. There just aren't many linebackers that have the ability to match up with tight ends and even carry them into the deep portions of the field. Milano is in off-man coverage and watch him mirror and close the space between himself and Mike Gesicki with zero help. That's someone who is comfortable in space and linebackers like that are not easy to find. The Patriots looked to attack Milano on this night, but Milano held his own. The Bills play corners over man coverage against the Patriots' twin set. The running back is motioned out wide, which forces Poirier to bump out to take the back and Milano to cover Gronk. Brady sends Gronk down the seam, but Milano makes life difficult on him. He doesn't let Gronk run his favorite route down the seam without a little disruption. Thanks to some strong hand fighting and his athleticism, Milano stays in good position, which forces Brady to have to make a perfect throw, and he fails to do so. Milano can also hold his own against running backs. When the Bills are in zone coverage, Milano doesn't ever lose sight of a back coming out of the backfield. He minimizes the easy yardage that backs can pick up when used as an outlet or check down. He is consistently asked to cover the opposing team's best receiving backs when Frazier dials up man coverage. And once again, his athleticism, ability to work through traffic, and comfort in space shine. When in man coverage, teams attempted to run pick routes to get the running back's advantageous leverage on the talented linebacker, but Milano was consistently up for the task. On this play from week four, the Patriots try running a curl swing combination to James White, a combination that can create a natural rubber pick on Milano. But you can see Levi Wallace alert Milano of what is about to occur. So on the snap, Milano easily works over the top of the rub and still has the speed to make up the ground he lost working over the top. The Browns test Milano with the same concept in Week 10. This time, Milano is matched up against Kareem Hunt. Wallace again alerts Milano of the rub route, and Milano easily minimizes the damage on the play. The Patriots love attacking opposing linebackers with James White, because he's truly one of the best receiving backs in the game. White got the best of Milano on this play, but his coverage wasn't all that bad. On third down, Milano meets the running back near the line of scrimmage, at which time White hesitates, but then takes off. Milano is in chase mode and just slightly out of phase, but when the ball drops in, he closes the distance and lodges his left arm in the basket that White created. White is able to cradle the ball, and as the two hit the ground, Milano attempts to rake the ball out, but White is able to secure it. This was pretty good coverage and awareness by Milano, 
but just a better throw and catch by the Patriots players. The Pats come back to the matchup on third down later in the game, and this time Milano wins. Brady shifts White out wide and sees that Milano's matched up on him. The Bills are showing a single high safety set, so Brady wants to attack the defense with a go route by White. As soon as White's eyes and body elevate, signaling the ball dropping in, Milano looks back for the ball and gets a piece of it. It was tremendous coverage by the linebacker, and Coach McDermott was right there to celebrate the big play at a time when the offense needed the ball back. Time after time over the course of the last three seasons, offenses liked to test Milano, and very rarely did they win, especially when teams tried testing his athleticism in the passing game, where he hangs his hat. How many linebackers can execute a bail technique against a running back when in cover three, track the ball down the field, and high point it for the interception. Since coming into the league, Milano has intercepted four passes and racked up 18 pass deflections. As you can see, Milano, and Edmonds for that matter, are incredibly important to the Bills' overall defensive scheme. Their athleticism allows the Bills to shut down underneath routes, cancel out third receivers, tight ends, and running backs, allowing the secondary to focus on minimizing the explosive plays deep. If Milano's progress up to this point is a sign of his development, then his 2020 season is going to be a treat. He's gotten better each season, and now he enters the final year of his deal. When asked about it, Milano exudes a character that head coach Sean McDermott loves. Yeah, you know, I'm not really uh, focused on that right now. That's the business side of things. I'm really focused on winning a championship here with the Bills. Hopefully, he can reach that goal this season and play many more years in Buffalo.